So uh, today we're very grateful to have Juven Wang here from Harvard, and he's going to tell us about some of his work on ultra unification and uh, its relation to the standard model. So, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at this prestigious Chicago and Cardano Center seminar. As uh, you, 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 you read, the title will be something I will call ultra unification and deformation of a standard model. This is based on a work done with uh, actually my student, Se Yang Wan, from Tsinghua University. Although I'm not really have any position there, but I offered Se Yang a PhD thesis topic and we start to work together. And Yi Zhuang Yu, a faculty at UCSD. Okay. So please uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any question. And I think I already post the slide available. I, let me post again. I also post on the website after work, but now it's on the Dropbox links. If you have a trouble to access, please let me know. Okay. Right. So one open question in high energy physics is that how the strong electromagnetic wave forces in the standard model are unified at high energy. So conventional viewpoint might be something like this, is that uh, we have some uh, effective field theory, standard model is say effective field theory, EFT, is a quantum field theory, a QFT, it's also renormalizable and Lorentz invariant. And we start from some smaller gauge group SU3, SU2, U1 with fermions in some representation. And uh, starting from Georgia and Glashow, they hypothesize that they may merge to larger gauge group. And supersymmetry might play an important role. And we are looking at the things at high energy scales. So we probe smaller and smaller distance. So here the diagram draw an energy scale and these are nothing really meaningful on the horizontal axis. I just draw it, but it's just saying that there is something going on, go to high energy scale. And the open question may also be, we may also thinking about this from uh, another point of view I'm, I'm going to say is uh, the proposal kind of uh, thinking from some quantum matter point of view is that a standard model is, although say effective field theory, but maybe just one possible phase among many, many phases of the universe that we can live. Just like you may live in the materials, which might be superconductor phase or ferromagnet, antiferromagnet, but you might be able to move to different phases. By doing so, we introduce one more parameters, uh, which is quantum vacuum tuning parameters. And the neighbor phases contain possibly, I will show various uh, gradient by theory, a God model, again, as effective field theory. If we want to move from one to the other, like neighbor God phase to the standard model, then we may need to uh, go to some apparent field theory, parent EFT, and they control the tuning between this phase transition. It turns out this idea, uh, although maybe relatively new to some people who study high energy phenol, but it's not really uh, totally, you know, wide speculative because people indeed think about this from various angles. For example, in the quantum field theory, uh, related thought about deformation class of quantum field theory, QFT is by, uh, speak by, spoke by Cyber in 2019. And also there's a quantum gravity using uh, ideas of cobordism class uh, to consider the domain wall between different theories. And then try to, uh, I, will, I will mention more later in the talk, or try to trivialize the cobordism class if one theory has some non-trivialness. And uh, these are proposed, for example, by Jacob McNamara and uh, Karun Baba. It's also around 2019. And in fact, uh, with one, we did have some works along this thought, uh, trying to say something about the chiral fermions problem. Uh, sorry for uh, jumping here, but I, I just sketched the idea, say that how is that related? But uh, there's a famous problem about uh, regularized uh, non perturbative chiral fermions, let's say on a lattice or some non perturbative ways. Uh, usually, when you try to pull a system, they say some phase A and neighbor phase B. Uh, if you have a chiral fermions, such as domain wall fermions between two phases, there's usually a fermion doubling on, on, on the other side. And if you have a chiral fermion on the other side and there's a co conjugation of this chiral fermion, the whole theory is not chiral. So these are fermion doubling problem. If, if, if we go back to think about these ideas, just for a moment, moment to uh, appreciate this idea, how is that related is that if the theory, even though it may have a chiral symmetry with chiral fermions, if less symmetries, turn out to be anomaly-free, which related to what I mentioned about the trivial cobordism class. 
then you are able to deform the, the Gabli series, say on the mirror fermion side, and then gap them. And the reason is simply because the trivial theory between uh, the, the trivial domain wall is due to that A phases and B phase should be the same phase if the domain wall theory is fully anomaly free. And if people can follow, then that'd be, that's great. But if, if not, it's okay. You just say that this type of similar idea actually was uh, kind of somewhere in the literature. But I think uh, these people actually uh, spoke out in a very nice way. So now we introduce uh, one more parameters as I will pave the way to my talk is that there's a quantum tuning parameters so then we can do more things. And this should be regardless, not the thermal phase transition, but quantum phase transition all at the zero T, T equals zero. And then we have a, also some energy scale. And in my talk, I will still be staying ignorant about what's the even higher energy theory. And uh, we are just looking at a certain energy scale that we can control to move from the standard model phases to guard phases and see how those phases and the phase transition might occur something interesting. Any question so far? And if you stay till the very end of my talk, you'll find that uh, what I will say about the ultra location, you're just thinking again, standard model or maybe standard model with some star means some modification. That's a 4D effective field theory, even on boundaries on 5D, a topological theory. It turns out that it could be gap or gapless. Depends on again, uh, I'll mention the energy scale. And this, it turns out the topological forces, discrete gauge forces, or so TQFT, or some sort, of these type of things will be evolved in the unification if I try to move a uh, standard model from the gut vacuum. And that's kind of uh, the whole picture. So many puzzle phases uh, are here in this diagram and. There could be some uh, 15 number of vial fermion per generation or 16 vial fermion uh, per generation vial fermions in this vacuum, which will come for you. Right now, I'm kind of summarize what I'm going to do today and all the effective field theory. And this ultra location will control some tuning between the 15N to 16N vial fermions with some topological quantum phase transition in between. So that's a proposal. Any question? I guess I have a question. Yeah, please. Um, if I understood you correctly, you said that this topological force is something that arises when you consider um, varying these vacuum tuning parameters. Uh, um, oh, okay, good. So that, that will happen actually. Uh, I'll, I'll just answer your question later. Well, so, I, I, haven't asked, I haven't quite asked my question yet, okay. but I, I was just checking that I was understanding what you were saying. So if, if that's the case, it, it seems hard for that to be something that would actually be, uh, I mean, it might exist mathematically, but it seems hard to, for it to exist as something that you could measure physically because, um, you know, it takes infinite action to go from one vacuum in a quantum field theory in infinite volume right, to another right. one. Very, and so varying these parameters is not something you could do yes, physically in yes. our world. So, so phrase to some people, maybe like a, a Dame or maybe Michael Levine, the condensed map view is that suppose we live in a material like superconductor phase. If we are just locally living somewhere, how can we drive for the whole, uh, the large portion of phase to a different phase, maybe antiferromagnetic or something else? It will be very difficult. Uh, if, if that's what you ask, uh, well, certainly I will not be able to propose a theoretical uh, experimental check for this, but I imagine if you just create some local region in a bubble, possibly there is still such a vacuum you can create. And that's the question, uh, that's the answer for the, 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 the later part of the question. And the first part is that, but actually uh, the tuning parameter can be something as simple as the uh, granular by theory Higgs potential. And I'll, I'll, I'll be written down precisely later, God Higgs potential. For example, if you have a sound uh, God Higgs term, uh, five square, five folds, you may be able to condense by tuning the, the, uh, the quadratic terms by flipping the sign, and then you can go to different baths. And how the topological field theory comes in is due to a global, non perturbative global anomaly constraint. And in the next few slides, I will say that uh, we haven't known whether we really have a right hand neutrinos, the stereo neutrinos, the 16 bar fermion in our vacuum. It's not solid written in textbooks, say they must be there. So there's a room we can replace the right hand neutrino to something else. And they carry some global anomaly index, and we can replace them by TQFD sectors. And there are other possibility all enumerates. 
So T curve T, for example, can be a phase of the 15 bar fermion model, for example, sitting here with T curve T at low energy. And uh, yeah, and there's some energy gap. Below the gap, you'll see a T curve T, and there's some energy spectrum of the fermions, etc. Is it that's the answer? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I know there are people leaving very soon for a meeting at 3 p.m. or 3 30, 2 30 p.m. shop. So I will need to try to be quick and also try to convey, but still try to um, interrupt me if you have a question. And yeah, so my outline will be start from uh, motivate you go to this ultra location, which is a framework beyond a standard model SM and grand by theory gut. These are just quantum field theory, quantum matter framework with global anomaly and cobalism constraint. I don't really have a dynamical gravity or Einstein gravity. So if people really seek for theory of everything or quantum gravity, I think my talk will be really boring to you. But who knows? I, I feel like we really have a lot of room to do even just for this stage. I can make a falsifiable statement and prediction for presumably for future experiments, not at my talk, but you will see. But secondly, I'll, I'll in, uh, introduce a quantum phase or quantum critical region, gapless regions near the standard model. And there will be a standard model phase go to neighbor gut phases, gradient by theory phases. And I will synthesize these two together and introduce the deformation and deformation class of the standard model. So standard model has 15 uh, plus one biofermion per generation. And here I draw one generation with biofermion, which is two doublet of spin three comma one, and each have bio spinner for each disc. And they have a this triple of SU3, a regular brew, and a doublet of SU2 for some of the left, left handed. Uh, quarks and this this purple olivic color is the the leptons and there's also doubly here and then you also have right hand singlet under the SU2 so the quantum number written SU3 SU2 and U1 uh, electroweak hypercharge and U1 sound X which is a uh, some version of the B minus L is a linear combination of barrier minus lepton and hypercharge which will be useful for other granular series so just regard some barrier minus lepton number so these are this other theory. It's a Yang-Mio gauge theory uh, with the algebra like this and with fermion seed in this representation and written in this. However, we may not really certain, be certain that what's the nature of this uh, right hand neutrino if they are really there. And this will play an important role for the whole talk. At least the first part of my talk, actually. And we also don't know the precise uh, legal structure of the standard model. There's a mass ZQ, uh, which is one, two, three, six, shared by the center Z3 and center SU2, Z2. There's a choice. So the open issue is that I would I like to kind of circle around is that whether well, the right neutrino is there, the stereo one, stereo under SU2, under the U1 have a charge. Actually, it's not stereo under the U1, for example, the X symmetry written here, but these are stereo into the standard model SU2, U1, and also standard stereo to SU3. So if they are, how many they are can be? These are our open issue. And, and how do they get mass with the right left hand neutrinos? Are they derived from mass? These are conventional way of thinking. So today I will try to say something, uh, provide possible resolution along this direction. Uh, a general framework I will just call ultra nullification. And there are other ways to get masses and replace the 16 bio spinner or the right hand neutrino by some TQFT or CFT or 5D extra dimensional invertible TQFT. Any question? So for condensed matter people, invertible TQRT means some phase protected by symmetry, uh, which is known as symmetry protected topological phase, SPT, in a specific uh, sense. And their partition function on a closed manifold on MD times S1 has always value uh, one. You might have a twist at some phase, but the absolute value is always one. So there's no topological degeneracy. So it's not intrinsic topological order. Okay, so the conventional way to get mass is the possible pairing with left hand and right hand neutrinos by the ROM, or maybe the, the same biofermion pair to get mass. If you write down the three generation of the, the, the leptons of the neutrinos, and uh, the, if I also introduce three right hand neutrinos, you may not need three, but let's just draw the three of them. And there, there could be some matrix like this. The ROM mass is set of diagonal and stereo neutrino mass is here and you diagonalize it and people like this uh, CISO mechanism to get the mass such that uh, this uh, right hand neutrino may be very, very heavy and uh, at a large MS scale, it pushed the uh, small mass of the uh, energy eigenstate of the mass for the uh, left-handed mass eigenstates and which will be uh, some 
scale like this and much smaller than the DRAW mass. But today I'm not going that direction. I'm just saying this is a convention. So what I'm, I'm thinking possibility, other way to get masses, replace the right neutrino by those new sectors, I will enumerate again later. And people are familiar with anomaly matrix for especially the discrete symmetry and global amount anomaly like a clay, you will know that, oh, this all possibility is familiar. So inside come from the discrete E minus L symmetry and global anomalies, non plutonic global anomalies, and cobaltism. Okay, any question? Okay. So uh, the anomalies really, I think possibly it's really uh, too simple for people, but I just make sure we are in the same page. Mostly actually, we are starting from thinking about anomaly of global symmetry G with Tahu anomalies. These are obstruction to gauge this symmetry G uh, with, for example, it has a G bundle, G connection. If you only probe as a background field, the G bundle, G connection are some a fixed value, depends on the parameters, for example, A that you choose. And these are like classical parameter. But if you want to gauge, then you want some of the gauge bundle and with this connection, this might this will lead to EO defined gauge theory. Yes, anomaly, total anomaly. But it's still a useful probe. If we don't gauge it, it's just a global symmetry. It's still a health, healthy theory. There's nothing wrong with it. And this will be a probe field we can couple. And to detect them, we try to couple to this background field for condensed matter pupil is called symmetry twist. And then you will be able to detect possible complex phases, invertible phases. And that's why it's later related to invertible TQFT. And when I say the symmetry, actually later on, I really need to include the precise space-time internal symmetry such that the space-time internal may share some uh, finite group sector. Even though this uh, common mandula theorem say the space-time internal symmetry should be no non-trivial relation, but it doesn't forbid the finite group sectors. So a lot of time when I need to uh, write down something like this, the ray or semi direct product, uh, they could share some finite group, I will write this way. And then in my talk, actually just the uh, Fermat parallel will play a role. And there's a finite group uh, shared between the space time, like spin group and the internal symmetry group. And for condensed matter people, this anomaly is an uh, obstruction uh, to, to this symmetry locally, strictly on site in the tensor product Hilbert space. You, you can think these are the problem that the dip UV maybe at the lattice color scale or some Planck scale to some people. And these are not anomalous non unsigned internal symmetry. It's again, again, it has obstruction to gauge such a symmetry because the symmetry is not uh, strictly local on site. For mathematician, it's uh, specified by uh, d dimensional anomaly specified by d plus one, sorry, d plus one dimensional invertible t of t, i t of t. It's a cobaltism invariant of the cobaltism group. I was uh, strictly used the ver version by Free and Hopkins, uh, which is topological phase cobaltism class. And that one contains, for S per, it contains the uh, d plus one d torsion class of the, the same uh, autism group and also d plus two d free part, the integer z class of the of d plus two d autism group and then combine them. These are the version of coordinate group I use. And once, if you know there's such G anomaly, then uh, we know that there's no G symmetric trivial gap phase. Uh, because anomaly must be matched by something. And for example, if you're thinking about theory, living on boundary of D plus one in non-trivial in verbal TQFT, then go to a VAF, trivial VAF in the neighbor, you must have something happen in the domain world. Any question? Is there a theorem that when you combine discrete space-time and internal symmetries, it's always a semi-direct product? Oh uh, no, actually in my talk, just direct product. I, I was hoping to replace my slide, but. Sorry, I didn't. Just the let's treat the product for my talk today. They could be semi direct product when the time reversal uh, symmetry may be evolved and it may act on some U1 charge and other. There's some interplay between time reversal charge conjugation, etc. or the, the internal symmetry group. You can have a semi direct. But in my talk, actually, today, just the Fermat parity is good enough. So finite group, Z2F, and the right product. Yeah, just for my talk. I shouldn't get to say too much in general. And one last time, just say, uh, when we say anomaly, uh, we, we put a lot of adjective and that causes confusion when people communicate sometimes. So we really, in my talk, I always speak to invertible one, um, which means the symmetry uh, group actually is invertible. Not only that, but also the way the group, the the, 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 the T that generates satisfied group load that you can stake. Uh, 
in certain cases, some people might start to include non-invertible type of things that some people still call anomaly and some people don't like it. So it will be excluding my talk. I will not discuss anything non-invertible. And even for inverted gravity, there's a Z or ZN class. These are productive local or non particular global anomaly. And the probes can include the gauge probe or gravitational probes or mixed probe. So please don't be confused about this gauge, a local, uh, maybe local symmetry for some people, this gauge anomaly with this local protruding anomaly. These are different adjectives for describe different things, even though they use the same words. Okay, I, I think people should follow. Sometimes you might also heard this chiral or actual anomaly, but this is again a probe, described probe as chiral symmetry. And we may also include, for example, bosonian Fermionian anomaly, depends on whether Fermion parity is intrinsic evolved minus one F. And then we also know that we may just go back to thinking all the symmetries, a way to probe a uh, couple to background fields. So this will be Tohu anomaly. And if we try to gauge them, the attraction will cause dynamical gauge anomaly and it should be canceled in the consistent gauge theory. So these are adjective. I will use just freely for now and certainly include all the reference, many more, including Professor Harvey's work about this anomaly inflow. So, and one last time, again, if we think about this local anomaly, oh, sorry, just particularly local anomaly, yes, we may just draw some uh, triangle diagram in 3 plus 1D uh, for the probe field. If we thinking about gauge anomaly cancellation, we do a dynamical gauge anomaly cancellation, we do couple to dynamic gauge field, this need to be canceled. But for the global symmetry background field, this is a signature to to, uh, to identify the theory. So it's not the uh, not need to be canceled. But uh, later on for my talk, I will a lot of time we'll need to switch between the two point of view because when we compute the covalism group, we really go to thinking about symmetry or in total anomalies. And then once last thing is derived, we may go to a uh, gauge some of the group and then try to check the consistency. So you should be clear in the context when you think about which one I'm talking about. But if it's not clear, uh, you can ask. But I will switch between two points of view. And mostly, I was starting from thinking about the Tohu anomaly global symmetry. Here, I'm only drawing the local anomaly captured by a Feynman graph. But there is a similar things you can write down for global anomaly as some invertible TQFT. And you can read the, the probe from invertible, IT, invertible TQFT to determine which one, uh, which, which kind of probes and uh, what's the property. And certainly, there is also famous ABJ that the global current non conservation due to the gauge field, coupled to gauge field. I will not discuss this one, but let's go. So, with a language fix, go back to the neutrino. In a moment, I just speak about neutrino. There is a just one second, there's a already a hundred trillion neutrino past our body. And these are possibly very mysterious things, and they are around us. And just give a sense how much this 100 trillion number is. I think it's three times more than the, the depths, the national depths of US, which I read from news yesterday. So this is a huge number of neutrinos, just one second pace our body. And we are, we are now going to understand better uh, what the neutrino might play a role. Because neutrino only couple to lepton current or gravity, then look at the, the anomaly. Actually, we should look at the B minus L type or gravity. It turns out that if we don't have a right hand neutrino, there is already a uh, Tohu anomalies if you view B minus L and gravity as big one probe. And this two diagram doesn't really cancel. Only when you have a right hand neutrino, they do cancel. So this is an issue that should we just regard this as Tohu anomaly? I think it's possibly fine for QFT theories. But some people may like to introduce 16 biofermion. And or do we need to break B minus L or something else? So this 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 is the starting point. And now, if the B minus L is combined with hypercharge, actually it's a very virgin, very inversion called this X symmetry, which is proposed by version Z. Maybe I saw Weiber around the same time, but I think version Z is what I know read from. Uh, this one is actually also similar to B minus L. Doesn't affect the anomaly structure because this hypercharge, is also, uh, it doesn't affect the anomaly cancellation. It just redefined the global symmetry in some way. But this one is actually suitable for SU5. Got. So we'll look at both either B minus L or X, just some U1 here. And there's a totally local mixed gauge gravitational anomaly or Z class. And you know, with only gravity and this 15 bar fermion, they do not cancel. They could just be total anomaly as the conventional way, the first one. But it may be um, 
it may be a ABG anomaly if the gravity become dynamical. So B minus L will not conserve. If there's some gravitational big one, maybe gravitational instanton, the B minus L current will not conserve. Maybe some people start to worry. But then if you want B minus L, you know, it can be actually broken at high energy. If you just write down effective field theory beyond standard model, you can write four fermion terms. It can break B minus L to discrete subgroup. So perhaps we should even not think you want B minus L, but discrete version of it. But altogether, a lot of time people just error a neutrino, just go back to my CISO mechanism. And you, then the anomaly actually is gone. The, the, so that could be also another possibility. But if you want to get rid of this low energy spectrum of the right-hand neutrino, then this neutrino right-hand one may be massive. But in any case, the hint seems from this is that this SM extension uh, with this neutrino might have some important effects on the background dynamical gravity, coupled to gravity in some way. So does this anomaly remain if we break to discrete sector like Z, 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 Z even? But especially I look at the Z fold subgroup. Uh, which in some sense, if you actually care spin 10 gram by series, the subgroup is uh, center of the spin 10, it fit nicely. But without spin 10, it's also not a problem. Just thinking about this discrete Z fold, as such that this S square of the symmetry is minus one F. Okay, so the, the punchline is that there's a, actually, I will show the mixed anomaly between Z fold and gravity. And there's this are non positive global anomaly. And these are the same class. And man, many previous were actually go along finding uh, or saying along this direction. But I think probably, I think uh, these people actually point out in the context more in the in the context of the standard model. Other people are just thinking discrete symmetry and gravity. Actually, Claire also has similar works on this discrete anomaly. Let, let me just summarize uh, what people have done recently checking the global anomalies, non positive global anomaly, more than just local positive anomalies for the standard model in gut. Uh, starting from much earlier work by Freak, he considered generalized cohomology of S2 and spin -N. In some sense, he doesn't include B minus L or other symmetry. So these are just uh, more like the, the dynamical gauge anomaly cancellations. And he showed there's no global anomaly in this case. And then uh, these people, a gentleman here, they considered include some Z4 and give some interpretation and also the, the global anomaly for this group. Uh, around the same time, we actually check uh, S spin 10 grand by theory and SU5 uh, for the reason about this chiral fermion, chiral gauge theory issue uh, in this paper. But in any case, we need to check a global anomaly and also these people and including my work here. And the kind of a thing, I think people while checking this, they, they kind of try to say, we want to find global anomalies where they are new one and then we want to check they can cancel. And in certain case, actually the Z system anomaly already show up. But the perceptive layer, most of people are thinking just say, let's add right-hand neutrinos. Cuban, why do you want them to cancel? Oh, yes, that's also a good question. I, 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 will, I will say that. I will say that more. Yeah. This is a one assumption, important assumption. Yeah. Let, let me just finish my statement. A lot, uh, actually, most of work, uh, yeah, I, these are technical details. Most of people here, they check this uh, using this certain special sequence. And this called Atia Health book. You, you cannot actually directly, in certain cases, cannot directly tell the group order like Zn or Zn square, sorry, Zn square or Zn, Zn times Zn. Sometimes there are difficulty. There's a technology uh, based on Fred and Hopkins using Aiden spectral sequence, which we use. Actually, you can check precisely this uh, global anomaly. So we are confident we really know the group. And also, we are confident we can read how to write this cobordism invariant from something called Aiden's chart. And there are some ways. Basically, summary say that uh, I think a lot of people are checking this, but I do really feel most people are in a more conservative view. Say that just starting from 15 or 16 bio fermion, and they just try to cancel the anomaly uh, with the fermion content. I think really from my work, stay in the paper, and also later on, we really try to find opportunity to go to a new arena that using the quantum matter new development in the past maybe decades. Okay, and. I'll, I'll answer Clay's question maybe one, two slides. Because the time is short, I don't really have time to go through this, but you, ha you have a slide you can read. I want to just show you that because you may not believe me if I don't show you the result. There's a computation down, and you will read the global anomaly or local anomaly from here. For example, Z to the fifth is local anomaly, five of them. You can write Feynman graph like this, five of them. And from textbook, you already know they cancel, so I'll not introduce. 
there are other global ones, Z2, Z4, Z16, and uh, those can be read from some cobotics invariant. They have a precise uh, description in terms of cohomology class or characteristic class or some eta invariant, APS, ATI produce single eta invariant, or some combination of them. But the punchline is that uh, in, in the end, I just want to say that it turns out only this Z16 anomaly will not be canceled given the content of 15 biofermion. If you leave a room, the right hand neutrino may or may not be there. Okay. And in the second part of my talk, very importantly, I would say again, if we replace the, the group two spin 10 group, which is for um, SO10 grain by theory, the spin 10 group, if they share the Fermat parity with the spin uh, Lorentz rotational symmetry, by the Fermat parity, actually they introduce an anomaly known as Stephen Winnie class W2, W3. However, this one has a constraint between space time tangent bundle TM and the gauge bundle SON, here SO10. Then these are actually mixed between the gauge probe of SON and the gravitational. So there's a mixed gauge gravitational anomaly here. And they'll play an important role in the second part of the talk. Okay. Right. So I'll skip this. And then this I'll also skip. And uh, the, the punchline is that I would like to answer a clear question now. So larger two ultra indications that if this is in global anomaly are not canceled, uh, what do we do? Are, are there alternate way of including 16 biofermion or not? And then let's start say the assumption more clearly. What do we really, it really improve is the standard model group with the Lee algebra and the global D group with a 15 times three generation biofermion. I think this tool is not quite an assumption, but I state this because it's, it's experimental facts. And uh, these are what we know. But the third one is what the uh, Clay say is that it just could be just a total anomaly. We don't just think it's just a signature of the theory. But uh, uh, if this discrete B minus L, if you believe this still plays an important role, uh, in some sense that uh, this content from parity and it, it can be a Z4 subgroup, if you add some higher, higher, higher dimensional fermion operator, you may still be able to preserve it. So maybe this plays on role. And there's a possibility, of course, you can break this symmetry completely. You introduce actually Marana mass between right hand neutrino. Not just right hand neutrino already sexually existing anomaly by plus one for the existing anomaly, but also if you introduce right hand neutrino Marana mass, the side side turn, you know, it will break B minus cell down to the lepton discrete Z2F fermion parity number. So they also break. But that's not quite a scenario I'm going because that has been done by the people side. So in some sense, you can say, I just try to find a, a room, a new window. But just for some reason, I believe maybe this, this symmetry is important and discrete version of it play a role. And the simplest one, I don't need to assume too much Z4 is enough. I can certainly go to like Z8 or others, but I just assume Z4 just for my talk. And if that symmetry is preserved somehow a certain high energy, and if, if that's, play really some important role at high energy, it should be dynamical gauged for the reason that if we want to embed this theory to some quantum gravity, either this symmetry need to be explicit broken or it should be preserved and dynamical gauge. And if I seek for the second route, then I want to gauge it and I preserve this, as I say. Any question? So this is the assumption. It, it just, maybe you can just take as assumption. Just see the possibility. Okay. And then quickly, the Z sin anomaly has some uh, this cancellation, not just mentioned now, but index between zero and some other things. Counting the three generation of biofermion 15, each of them give actually minus one mass 16, so that's minus three. And adding up, if you want to introduce still some right-hand neutrino, you can, and each one give index one. If each one, each one then carry charge one on the Z4, which is the case for the usual uh, right-hand neutrino, it indeed carry the Z4 charge one is here. The, all the bioframes actually carry chart one. They sit in nicely in the diagonal Z4 subgroup of the U1 X on the 16 dimensional representation. Okay. And uh, then if that's not, if, if that's the case, if that can be canceled already, then my talk and nothing interesting. But what I want to say is that there's a new possibility, the new human sector. We may just really live in that vacuum. And it may be very hard to probe because we only couple to them through some discrete Z4 gauge forces at high energy, then, then there's a, such a possibility. And, okay. So, 
<clears throat> a quick question. I, I don't <laughs> want to slow you down too much, but I think I understand the motivation for what you're doing, given the assumptions you've made. Yes. But it, with these new proposals, are you actually going to be able to compute how they lead to neutrino masses? Oh, yes. That, that was mentioned actually. These are the, the part of things I plan to discuss in this talk. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Please ask me if I don't answer. Nice question. Okay. Yeah, but nice question. So another way actually put the what Clay asked, I'm not sure it's, it's a good way to say this, but if we really think about what we are, is some IR uh, effective field theory, including standard model, maybe you can still think anomaly inflow uh, from the UV theory, which might be a TQRP gap. I'm not sure these are quite precise, but I'm saying that perhaps you can think about cancellation in another way to flip the index to high energy and you have a UV flow to IR, a preserved index, which means flip this one to the right-hand side. I think this might be another way to interpret. But in any case, this, this has run to interpret. I'm not going to improve what I say and leave uh, imagination for you. So standard law has stated several times that I can either introduce gapless fermion and the 16 one, or I can actually also make gap by quadratic conventional mass like Dirac Marana. And as I say, your mass kinetic term doesn't break Z4 kinematically, but Higgs condensation actually also breaks Z4. But that's a scale much below the electrical weak, right? Uh, or, or around the electrical weak. A Marana mass actually break Z4 explicitly. But the proposal informed by quantum matter develop, development is that we can actually have a Z4 preserving anomalous TQFT or some one higher dimensional invertible TQFT as an anomaly inflow of Professor Harvey Pioneer. These are written as covalent invariant or some APS eta invariant of 41. Ponga radio was the AZ, AZ2 gauge field. Actually, I will say oh, more. This is actually Z4X mass Z2F, this quotient part of this gauge field. And uh, there's also possibility if the Z4 is gauged, we actually have a so called symmetry enriched and gauged theory, topological field theory. In my opinion, actually, you also have a run to couple to something gravity in some more way, but I, I don't have a much more much more intelligent to say, I'll leave this here. And we can also just break a Z4 by some gap phase, or maybe even Z4 preserving the gap is CFT. In this kind of CFT, I think it's more like a unparticle type of physics, such as the Z4 symmetry. So this might be a new high energy phenol kind of a, a frontier that we don't really look for particles only, even just in the standard model vacuum, we don't really have those extended objects. It, it could be gapped. And the energy scale for this gap is unknown because anomaly cannot tell you this. And but these are really beyond particle physics. And it's also some CRT physics. So I think it's actually along the line, people are liking it. But uh, we really maybe you fit in this into the beyond standard model physics. And the picture will be like this. Uh, it's a couple system of 4D or uh, standard model that I show you this fermion content with some gauge group and uh, this gauge bosons. And these are kind of conventional way, at least in the 70 already, people know this. But the, the new sector, which uh, I try to outline introduce here is that there could be a TQD sector with line operator and surface operator living on 4D boundary of 5D invertible TQFT. And when the energy really go to really high, if that Z4 really play into a role, it's gauged. And there's a channel connect, talk to each other, so this gauge Z4. I skipped some details about define this Z4 uh, gauge field. Actually, for people who are familiar with like spin C gauge field, spin time U1 Z2, you know these are not quite abelian gauge field. And there is some constraint between the gauge bundle of W2 TM and the Chen class in the spin C case. In this case, also similar. So that's why I said there's some detail the W2 TM of the stable winning class of W2 TM, the spin structure constrained to the Z2, Z4 gauge field in some way. And we are taking the uh, by this uh, Z2 as the Z plus Z2 a cohomology class. Yeah, I, I don't think this detail helps for general audience. So, okay, so so that's it. Um, actually, Clay and Kantaro Murray give an additional constraint about construct this for DTQT. Says that if we really want to match uh, the hidden sector, suppose we don't have a right neutrino, how many can we remove if we want to preserve that Z4? And they tell us that. There's a obstruction to control them if you consider R class in Z16. So, so if you just want to have a three generation totally removed and then go to the TQRT theory, that's not possible. 
but we can usually consider some two or four or cetera of this index. And then we may still add some right-hand neutrino and some invertible T resetter to cancel them. But you can imagine there's a lot of model building, but I think it's kind of a finite number of countable name you can try to enumerate and play. And I'm starting to do the phenol game actually, but uh, not, not for this tool today. Um, yeah. So these, these are kind of uh, constraint. Actually, if you try to match the amount anomaly index, there is some constraint about control the symmetric gap phase. And yeah, okay, any question? And so then now I, I decided to skip this uh, construction of the, the, the TQFT. These are detail. I think it won't be easy to explain in a short time, but the, 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 the punchline is that this ultra location in one simple version is that coupled the standard model theory in 4D to 4D TQFT or 5D TQFT, and maybe also CFT center, et cetera. But this, the simplest version one can construct is, for example, index two TQFT in 4D and, and also some standard model coupled to the Z4 gate force. So the pass and integral return all together in cool the standard model and the TQFT sectors. Only when you put this standard model and TQFT sector together, you can preserve the space time deformorphism spin group symmetry transformation and the discrete Z4 gauge force uh, transformation. So these are gauge and deformorphism transformation invariant altogether only when you consider this couple theory. If you only consider standard model alone with 15 valve fermion, then there's a problem. There's a problem if you care to cancel the anomaly, it can just be the whole anomaly anyway. Okay. Sorry, I, could, could, could I ask a very naive question? Yeah, please. Um, so if I'm just a, a physicist living in four dimensions, I look around, I see a particle content, and yes. now you tell me I've coupled topological degrees of freedom in, yes. cancel the anomaly. How do, how, do I, how do I know that? How do I see that? Okay, certainly these are just mathematical statements, right? I haven't given you a reason, then I'm going to answer it. But these are good questions. You can ask your, you know, condensed matter frame, given you a superconductor, how do you know whether these are conventional BCS superconductor, which actually is a Z2 gauge theory at low energy, or oh, there could be some topological feature. That's the same problem. Give hand you a material. So we are living in this SM vacuum. How do we know? The real thing, actually, I try to point out is more than just mathematical equation. I'm trying to point out we may not live in the vacuum we imagine. There's a sector layer. The, the vacuum structure is totally different. There's some more in, entanglement than, than we saw. More than just the Yang Mio KG3 or the SU3 Yang Mio SU2. There are some additional entanglement structure underlying. And it's because the, the, the sector that can talk to each other is just this discrete sector. So it's very hard to approach. But let, let me just go back to tie this question uh, this professor asked and also safe, safe and also the uh, Jeff, they ask about the mass. Let me just say about the mass, you know, the conventional way we think about given mass is Anderson Higgs, right? So these are quadratic terms, bilinear fermion coupled to Higgs field, condensed the Higgs. We may also have SU3 confinement and some smooth confinement as confinement. But the, the, the new thing here is that it's possible to introduce interaction to general mass. These are called symmetric mass generation. It's not quite used in my talk, but actually today, earlier I was already mentioned one mechanism called symmetric gap TQFT. So these are mass to preserve mass, preserve anomaly and preserve symmetry, but still gap. But there's a low energy consequence. And there's a construction about this gap phase is symmetric gap extension mass. So I, I'm trying to say that we do really have a new mass generation mechanism in SM or the SM star vacuum that I say, a modified SM vacuum. And what's the experimental probes? You know, the usual way we think neutrino mass, traditional signal mechanism, we push Marana mass, much larger than Dirac mass, smaller than the, the Dirac mass scale. But I imagine that perhaps we do really have left neutrino as verified by experiments. They travel by some kind of a nearly massless, gapless modes, like a wave, electron, muon, tau type. How do they get mass? Why their scale is so small? Actually, I have a repo this. Uh, let me just repo this now. Yeah. Sorry. I have a repo this long ago in this hover uh, seminar, but uh, no one gave me feedback. Maybe today is different. Let me try to say it again. So imagine that this TQFT, if we construct in the vacuum, really play a role in standard model. This Z4 can have a topological defects, and these defects can trap zero moles. For example, Marana zero moles or some zero moles. 
So this zero mode in the energy spectrum will play will give some degeneracy. For people who are familiar with the defects code, there could be some kind of vortex or some structure defects. If you solve the vortex structure, there's an energy sub gap like this gap. These are topological geek defects of the gap, much smaller than TQD gap, and possibly also smaller than GOT or plum scale gap. The scale of this sub gap, I hypothesize, maybe play a role or to give a mass to the left hand neutrinos. In, in this case, I don't necessarily need right hand neutrino, but just think about left hand neutrino interact with this interference with the zero mode spectrum and also the voltage sub gap or the topology device sub gap. If you evaluate this sub gap spectrum, actually, similar analysis delta of the TQD gap scale divided by this. And these are energy scale or consequently relate to the TQD energy gap and also tell us some energy sub gap that perhaps if it's related to neutrino mass, that's something we can measure. And for condensed matter people, essentially these are vortex sub gap, sub from superconductor gap and with some Fermi energy, then this delta C is much smaller than EF, but the gap sub gap size is actually delta C over EF, square of EF. And these are the possible small gap. Here, here I'm just over some possibility, say, say that maybe you already, we already have data, just uh, we didn't interpret in the way we should. And I think what I give here today give a this possibility. Wait, do, do, could, yes. Could I ask what, um, what information would you need in order to compute the coupling of the left-handed neutrinos to the zero energy modes at these defects? Because the strength of that coupling will clearly determine the mass. And so what data do you need to compute that? Uh, very good. I think one need to first control the topology defects in the T of T, and it's still something under underway. Right now, I'm just giving the dimensional analysis, so I don't have a concrete. Data. I'll be happy to talk about this if we, you know, really have anything, uh, you know, computed, and then maybe try to match the experimental data. But not at this moment. But these are all other things possibly can be do can be done. Yeah, yeah it's a good question. I, I have a I have a very naive question. Okay, so. Okay. Well, what is the uh, operator for neutrino mass you are going to get? Very good. So, so I think the question you are asking is that suppose I start from maybe right hand neutrino vacuum with left hand neutrino. Maybe I can consider start whatever stuff. you want. Let, let's yeah. look and at the and I yeah. try to move TQFT. How do we move? So these are how, what's the deformation problem? I'm not asking about moving TQFT. I'm just asking if you look at one. What is the effective field theory at one EV for you? So there is a degree of freedom we call right left hand neutrino, right? I think the rest of it uh, you can already all integrate it out. So what what is the what is the neutrino mass operator you get out of this? Yeah, well, let, let me just say one thing that because I'm not really using this quadratic mass type of thinking. I suppose you can possibly introduce. I don't have an answer directly for what is uh, the, what what is the other mass? I don't understand. Lorentz invariance uh, and the definition of mass. Right, so we, we there's only that operator that we call neutrino uh, fermion mass. Okay, right? yeah. So so then 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 probably these are something about this. You know, if we have a TQFT, usually people will say a low energy indeed is a Lorentz invariant theory. But if there is an energy gap, which indeed if you try to just thinking about there are some you know insertions of uh, anions or fractional excitation, you can add above the gap. Actually, I think. The strict speaking sense is that the Lorentz invariant really is just the the theory below that energy gap. And let, let me try to say, I mean, I guess you could I, try to. Let me say this way: I don't have a direct construction of um, giving you uh, using the matter contents on this standard model plus maybe fermion field theory to go to the. To, to, to tell you how to go to the TQD theory, TQD theory. I only have a construction of the TQD theory. That's another question. It's, it's a question also on the way I'm still trying to do. Yeah, so so I don't have a EFT really control the whole definition. Steven, maybe, uh, let me see if I understand. I mean, you're, you're just saying that uh, to an answer Leanne Tao's question, in what you presented so far, the mass would just be zero in the sense that you, what you have done is coupled the standard model to a topological field uh, theory yeah, you can, you can uh, through the through a global symmetry yes, and yes, um, the nice feature of that coupled system is that it has no anomaly for this z4 version of b minus l yes 
but there's no mass generated by that. But however, because there is no anomaly, you believe that it can be deformed to something with mass. Uh, you, you can pull that way. Yeah, yeah. But, but that part hasn't been done yet. Yeah, yeah. That deformation hasn't been really carried out. It's something still on the way. At most, you can generate the mass operator. Yes. Only, only after electroweak symmetry breaking, you can get neutrino mass. Well, you could try to generate the dimension five operator. That, that's what I was asking. Are you generating that dimension five? And, and try to get that with Look, some. You know, I think. I think. I, my opinion, like one I, over I think. I think, it, I think. it's probably more not not, not something like a, the familiar dimension five or dimension six operator. You may you may be able to explore the deformation. Oh, this oh you have the Dirac mass. I just have a right hand neutrino as a as a degree of freedom. So I, I write Dirac mass. Well, I think Play yeah. is right that there just isn't any mechanism for mass in this so far. It's it's really just a an so, analysis so far, based on yeah, so far so far I just control the T of T. I didn't tell you how to deform and what operator to aid, but if, if that's that's doable, I think it indeed can generate uh something about this energy gap or the TQD gap, but that's not in my in my construction yet. But but uh, but I, I do I do give you some general idea how those things might tie together once the energy gap, TQD gap can be determined by constructing this deformation. Okay, so my time is short. Is that really if we put together, I, I think topological sector really play a role for the unification in the past. And then these are the new frontier, I think. And uh, these are kind of picture. And right now we mentioned this deformation such that uh, in some sense, we may think there's a 16 nun or 15 uh, fermion. What really light between this may be what I call alternate unification, even though I don't have a full pattern theory, but I do have some basis in cool the TQD sectors. Okay, and now, I think these are just uh, not easy to, but I think I can still say a few words to make things make sense. So I'll go to the second part of my talk. Uh, right now I'm going to say just quickly that the, the uh, SM uh, earlier was chosen 15 vial per mil. Right now I'm going to fix to just 16 in the in another scenario. And it turns out the 16 vial per mil still has some interesting. And this 16 vial per mil turned out to be a neighbor to George Glashow and Patti Salon gun model. In the same time, I'm now looking at this GG or PS model at higher energy, but at the parameter space of the gut Higgs condensation in different parameter space I will show. And then in certain case, I can construct a SO10, a familiar SO10 if I just use conventional one. You can still go to George Glashow and Patti Salon in the usual way, but I will especially show one more modified version to aid a discrete WZW turn. And such that the transition, quantum phase transition is more interesting in the sense there is additional deconfined degree of freedom, a gapless region, which perhaps showing the shaded area. There's additional new BSM gauge forces deconfined in the region, both from George Barshaw to PS, GG to PS model. These are along the line, similar to what condensed matter people call deconfined quantum criticality in an analogy that I will explain. Okay. But to put together is that I earlier introduced a deformation of smarter using this Z16 anomaly with Z16 index. And the punchline next second part is that I will use a different index, the W2, W3 anomaly to deform the SM and between the George Glacial police along. And certainly there's a choice. P is Z2, zero or one. Actually both case can deform to George Glacial police along. And the conventional way is choose P equal to zero. I will introduce a new way to P equal to one. Okay, slides are available so you can read. And then I quickly go through that standard model has these contents. If we uh, include the left particles, this, this uh, left-handed particle together, quantum black quark and lepton, I get this SU4, SU2, SU2, SU2 left and SU2 right as the particles on the model. So these are false color. Juven, with 16 fermions, are there any anomalies? Yes, fermion content, no. The answer is no. So, so, so I will answer your question. Say, if the fermion content 16 has no anomaly, where do I introduce the W2, W3 anomaly? That's what you want to ask. And the short answer is that actually this is from the God Higgs sectors. The God Higgs are some bosonic matter field. This bosonic matter field, you can introduce a scalar potential. Itself still doesn't have an anomaly, but this God Higgs potential can aid a topological term or some discrete torsion 
class of a voice to know which like term. It's not quite WZW. I don't think it's in the original way, but I think similar. And that 4D WZW term will saturate the WZW3 anomaly. So the answer is that all the 16 fermion of this model doesn't have the this W2W3 anomaly, but uh, we can put the SO10 gut and George Kalasha polysalon together and with the content. But I'm trying to understand the logic a little better. If, if you're just a low energy person looking at these 16 fermions and they don't have any anomaly, wouldn't the right philosophy just be to think that by adding degrees of freedom and interactions, you can get to any other theory that doesn't have an anomaly? Yes. Let's, let's, let, yeah. So let me uh, maybe draw a figure. Let me think about this. Oh, let me, let me show you in this slide is that, so these are the fermion contents you asked about. And a couple of the yummies. This has no anomaly of the Z16 because it wouldn't would for the 16 fermion. But we do can move different to different guard phases by introduce this Higgs, guard Higgs field. Then we can add topological term to this Higgs, Higgs field. And then they can carry anomaly. So anomaly is carried by the gut Higgs, the grand unified Higgs, the, the gut Higgs. This, so you should think about those tabla. Now the gut Higgs field is some bosonic modes living on a boundary or some 5D invertible T of T of W2W3. And that can carry the W2W3 anomaly. But the good thing is that if you A list terms, then what you will see is that. Uh, I, I do have a model that you can move as a parent theory of SO10 gut by different condensation of the gut Higgs of 45 and 54 representation of SO10. You can move George Glash or Palace Alarm by condensing different Higgs or condensing both to standard model. Condensing none, nothing will go to SO10. But the WZW term, aiding this term, will make all the phases tied together more nicely in order to saturate uh, uh, the only possible anomaly for SO10, which is W2W3. In that case, the critical theory, it cannot be, it's not just uh, gapless in a trivial way. It cannot be trivially gap for sure, but it's, it's also not just a usual transition because there's some anomaly to non in the And what the, the end of the story is that you can hypothesize the low energy degree freedom of this, this God, God Higgs constructed WZ of term. And there is some way you can construct so-called uh, some, some version of a U1, uh, Dark gauge forces coupled to the uh, coupled to the fractionalized additional new degree freedom that you can call parton, and there's some decomposed critical region. So I, actually, I was going to present two version model. One is this SO10, it's just got Higgs but without anomaly. The other is this but with W double term. Then there's a critical region in between the transition. There's a new degree BSM physics, and that's why we call SM star. And you know these are uh, certainly a logical possibility to put the uh, additional possible anomaly to into a play, but it's not really random in many reasons. Uh, other than just say these are very similar to what the uh, uh, one lower dimension or two plus one d decomposed quantum criticality studied by condensed matter folk. Uh, but also that uh, there is a, a subtle reason that if you look into a topological defects constructed by this God Higgs field. It turns out that the, the homotopy group or cohomology group need to saturate some relation to construct such a term. It turns out this term really is controllable and in 5D and also out of the uh, two form field because look at the, the defects. Yeah, this will be really quick. You just say that the, if we look at the, the spatial three dimensions and then try to consider topological defect, it classified by pi two, it comes with some uh, monopole not that the gauge field multiple, but it's just multiple of the gut Higgs. There is some defect code that uh, you can count and you can construct such things only in certain mention of the dimension. Let's say the, the, in this case, actually it's uh, five dimension is the uh, 5D bulk theory we are thinking and 4D boundary. In order to put this defects construction possible, actually we require to match the defects in the GG and P model in some nice way. And, it turns out that only the pi two of this one work. And actually match the construction turned out to be something you can call the two form cohomology class of B field and C field. And that actually can match W2, W3 anomaly. And there are some, you know, link invariant you can check to, to see this, this construction work out. 
by adding this term, the whole series will be not just Yang Mills and Yang Mill coupled to the Gaff Higgs term, but with this WZ double term, then there is a low energy consequence that uh, we say that uh, we say that uh, there is a possible new deconfined gapless region at the transition because it has non-trivial number. At the transition, the symmetry, the full SO10 or spin 10 precisely is preserved. And the symmetry is preserving, and there should be some uh, gapless modes or TQ of T, et cetera. And then one hypothesized low energy consequences, this deconfine U1 prime dark gauge forces. And we also do a non-trivial check that you know, it indeed match uh, anomaly by going to some uh, appropriate SU2 group that match this new SU2 anomaly that we can check. It's similar type of uh, analysis to confirm the low energy dynamics. Low energy theory indeed can match the anomaly. So yeah. So actually, I wasn't too bad. I think if that if it had the discussion is followable, maybe it's okay. But if not, then but if any more question, you can ask the second part. I try to give a, a different deformation class. The second one is, uh, no, sorry, let me just uh, say again. I, uh, I try to introduce a different topological term, the W2, W3, and then we can move between this God model. And right now we can even just fix 16 file, file fermion model and we can still have something interesting. So these are the second deformation class labeled by W2, W3. And the picture, including the SO10, perhaps, and with W double term between George Garage and Paris Alam is a 16 unviable fermion model. And there's some W2, W3 terms that uh, in the 5D bulk. And actually it's a mixed gauge gravity type. And this type actually is a bit more subtle is that uh, because SO10 is part of the gauge bundle that you actually require to define such a 5D bulk, right? So in the discussion earlier, actually, Mostly we are treating the SO10 as a global symmetry. But in the end, if you construct this gauge theory of GG, PS, and SO10, you need to gauge the spin 10 and so certainly SO10. Then when the gauge group is just at the George Barash or Fadis along this smaller group, you are confined or living in the 4D theory. But when you are promoted to the spin 10 near the critical theory, actually you have a tunnel to go to a 5D bulk because the 5D theory actually require the dynamical SO10, once SO10 is gauge. So this, this theory is a bit uh, even a more non-trivial. And I suppose this 5D theory is actually gapless. It's not gapped. And these are different from the part one. The, the 5D bulk with gauge Z4 should be gapped. But this 5D bulk with spin 10 gap, ga gauged is actually gapless in some way. So then put together with 15 and 16 vial fermion, and you may hypothesize some quantum vacuum moving this way. And let me summarize in the last two slides, if that's okay. okay. Just two, two more slides, and that's it. Daniel, is that okay? So in the part one of my talk, I mentioned that if we look at the, the three generation of standard you know, thermal content and with possible some right-hand neutrino with some number, maybe some of them are not there, then there's some index mass Z16 may not be zero. You can regard this as some tofu anomaly of those global symmetry. And uh, then it labels some deformation class. And if you break the U1 down to Z4, that uh, the earlier this, the Z class local anomaly will break down to a Z16 global anomaly. And uh, there is some, again, some type cobaltism that you can write. So these are the cobaltism class or deformation class that you control how to move this 4D standard model. In the part of my talk, I even restrict to just 16 valve fermion, but there's still a, a, another term we can write for 16 valve fermion, GG and PS model, you have a way to move between them. Choosing either P equal to zero or P equal to one in the model class, you have a different possibility of moving this vacuum. And with additional deconfined equal freedom, if you choose P equal to one. And if you put this together, uh, which I don't think I will really have time to say this, is that uh, uh, you, should, you should combine these two terms together and then this will give you a way to deform the SN. But for people who know that we really have a standard model gauge group is gauged, then once you gauge your group, gauge group, the global symmetry of this internal symmetry is gone, but there could be additional higher symmetry. 
Naively, the particle content of standard model seem not have any higher symmetry because they do sit in the fundamental representation. But because of this SU3, SU2, U1, they could share some center you can compute. Depending on different mass, ZQ, Z6, actually they do have a different center. And taking into account the fermion content, which you see the uh, representation of the gauge group, you can check they do have some uh, subgroup that can be unbroken. And these are the remaining one form electric symmetry. And depends on whether the magnetic monopole is there, then you will also determine whether U1 magnetic symmetry is there. And then we can compute again the cobaltism class or cobaltism group for the standard model as a gauge standard model group and with additional higher symmetry. And then these are the classification for this by the cobaltism variant. And then we can further determine then depends on the standard model theory, which class it is. And they should control two things. One is the consistency of the gauge theory. When, when you have a gauge group gauge, then the dynamical gauge anomaly should cancel. Uh, another thing is that once you fix the deformation class, you can move to different vacuum and study the neighbor phases. The, the last thing, the third, once you gauge the internal symmetry group, you do have a higher symmetry. Then you can use this higher symmetry anomaly to determine or control or discuss the fate of the quantum dynamics. So there are different layers of uh, uh, complexity. Yeah. And I'll end by saying that uh, recently people like Clay were interested in categorical high symmetry. Actually, just within the George Glashow and the FLIP U5 model, there's an interesting FLIP Z2 symmetry that can flip between the two. If you look into the U5 subgroup of the George Glashow and U5 of FLIP, model, they are different U5 group and fermion sits combined in the 5R10 in a different way. They are flipping the uh, U quark, D quark, right, right hand the U quark, D quark, and the right hand the neutrino, EN, mu, such that these are the Z2 flip symmetry. There's actually a gauge subgroup, a U1 of this U5 and the U1 of this U5 flip. They are different U1 and they actually have a flip symmetry. They can flip to U1. This actually, this gauge group is is gauged, for example, in a higher energy like spin 10 model, you can find a subgroup. If you look into this carefully, people like Clay will know that there could be a categorical symmetry. And indeed there is. There's a, let me say there is just within this gauge group. There's a one for magnetic symmetry unbroken if you don't have a magnetic monopole. At least, at least at some scale. Suppose there's a magnetic monopole, maybe a very high energy, but perhaps at low energy, if we emerge, you can still study this uh, emerging one for magnetic symmetry and that coupled to this Z2F in some nice way. And there is actually a fusion rule between this operator. They don't obey the group law. So these are actually a categorical higher symmetry of this operator. However, if you really embed this group into the two U5, inevitably somehow the gauge group needs to be fully gauged into the way that in already include the full spin 10. And the end story is that the spin 10 actually, uh, the whole spin 10 actually will kill all the higher symmetry. So there's something about this low energy. If you look at U1, U1, semi-dry Z2 flip, you can still find categorical symmetry, but the, when you really try to put in together to the U5 Guinevere theory and then put this two U5 gauged together and put it into the spin tank Guinevere theory, they are all gone. The categorical symmetry are gone. And that's the end of my talk. And with that, thank you for your attention. Sorry for going over time for 10 minutes. Ah, thank you. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of questions during the talk, but um, I just wanted to see if there are any quick ones before we turn off the recording. Well, maybe, I don't know, this is maybe a, just a small comment, a little bit of a complaint. Um, <laughs> you use the word unification, but it seems to me that almost everything that you've talked about in this talk is happening in the infrared. You yes. have some topological field theory that you're coupling to the standard model in yes. order to deal with these uh, anomalies in the C4 symmetry. Yes. And uh, you're, you're thinking, I, I guess, that this uh, results um, from some UV theory when you flow to the infrared. And so yes. that UV theory is not really described in a, I mean, you don't know exactly what that is, but you would need to know what that is to, for example, compute neutrino masses. But then 
in a way, things are even less unified because now you've got the standard model maybe embedded in a gut and you've got whatever it is that flows to this topological field theory. Yes. And so it's less unified because there are now more components at play. Yes, I understand your complaint because for example, like George Gasha, you want to put the SU3, SU2, you want them to a simple legal. But here, I don't, right? Because there are some teacher of this sector and here are some different gauge group. I don't necessarily even put into a gut form. Right. Yeah, but I, I actually, let me answer this. I think actually the, the secret is that we need to explore the phase transition in order to go between the phases. Actually, I think the secret of uh, unification will show up. And I, I hypothesize since it's recorded, I think a super symmetry will come up very nicely, maybe naturally in this way. Instead of moving to the high energy scale to look for super symmetry, actually move from the back, maybe the super symmetry will show up. And, and then how the forces tie together, I suppose there are some constraints. It's not the, you know, it's not, it's not clear at this moment, but uh, I really feel that way. Just, I think the, the forces will maybe tie together in some nice way. And certainly, you know, I, I really say my work is really not ambitious as uh, probably like string theorist uh, people. So you are thinking that, oh, these are really something not comparable to quantum gravity problem. Yes, I agree. It's just a very small problem. But, uh, but I do feel like uh, there are predictions I can make and falsifiable, I, in my opinion. Okay, thanks. I, I agree with you. The, 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 what, what exactly you need to consider about unification is still on the way. It, it's, it's not final yet. Yeah. Uh, there's one more question. I cannot hear you. Not not clear. Are you asking? John, e John asked, "Is the is the grand unified group E six of any use to you?" Uh, I think that's not, what he said. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, studied that, but uh, perhaps I can do the same. Just uh, try to include more vacuum and then try to move them. As long as people study those God model before, there are many of them. So you can start to add more and then try to understand how they how they put together and how do you have a phase transition between them. Then there there are such a room that you can study. Haven't haven't done that in my talk. Sorry. Uh, uh, we can think about that. Uh, first, I can ask one one very quick question. So, in order to get this picture that you are showing now, in yes. addition to the sixteen Wildfranian spectrum of the standard model, yes. what what are the other assumptions? In other words, I'm not. I guess it's not that you're deriving SO10 from just uh, self-consistency, but you, you have to have some sort of assumption. You, you edit it by hand to get this picture, right? In other words, so, yeah, so yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah. Some, some you arrive at some uh, form of machinery, which you call the, which allow you to go along the line of deformation classes. But uh, this is not the unique picture we get. Starting from the standard model with the sixty fermion, or are you saying that? Right. So, yeah, yes. So this actually related to the question I think uh, Liang Tao was asking is that uh, you know suppose you start from maybe uh, sixteen or fifteen bar fermion, how do you move between them, right? So, so there should be some deformation parameter. In my talk, I didn't construct them. Yeah, if that's what you are asking, I, I didn't really construct the deformation parameter between sixteen and fifteen. So, oh, I, I kind of, so I, yeah, I, perhaps, I, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I separate two part of talk, but I think I try to put picture together. I, I said that if I use the deformation uh, parameter, deformation class labeled by this cobalt invariant in 5D or just some Toho anomaly in 4D, then I say I, I try to use this one and this one to control how I move. And I, I could put these two together and I study them again. Maybe I will find something more. And, but in my talk, I separate, I separate the study. So, yeah. so, so maybe you can right. ask it. Yeah, just make sure. Yeah. yeah, part of my question is that uh, you haven't done the full classification of uh, space of uh, uh, deformation parameter, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, certainly, you picked up some uh, some possible deformation class parameter, and you explore the consequences of that. 
And yes. this picture, as a result of a specific take, not like, you know, mathematically, you know, entire space of a possible deformation. Uh, uh, yes. But right. So in other words, um, so in other words, I guess observationally, I don't know if it's possible ever, but somehow there's a bubble of other God uh, sector and then you, you are living in the Santa model. And it, as you go through the bubble wall, you expect something to happen and then you'll learn that the vacuum structure that we live in, it's not just Santa model, but there's other neighboring sectors which are connected by by the Ulster unification theory. Um, so I'm asking partly uh, what were the in your gameplay, in addition to the 16 fermion and in, in earlier work, uh, 15 fermion, what is the other, you know, assumption or, you, you know, input you have to do to generate uh, this type of uh, ultra unification picture? I guess you have to pick something. Right. Okay. Uh, Sumu's question, if I interpret correctly, is that, you know, these are all the possible, uh, uh, this uh, 5D composing variant for the 4D anomaly for the theory and maybe i can pick up one of them and i study the possible deformation oh okay maybe maybe that's what you say but it's not quite that case because a lot of them actually cancel they cannot even have a play uh, for right. example for example just counting like a standard model with u1 all the z11 actually nine of them are gone the two of them they are not they are not they are still there is this two this this class and that class so so if I, you know, they are, they are indeed a lot more restriction. Here I'm just showing all the class, but uh, for example, actually what really has been, uh, need to be used is the Z2 class, uh, Z, Z2 the power, Z, Z square class. And there's also Z16 class here. Right? And then certainly you can have the, the both, you know, into a play. And I also the Z2, W2, W3. So I think I understand. Uh, okay, thank you. So if you, if, you know, in general, certainly, if you are not knowing more God model, maybe you can do more, but I, there's still some choice that within this, these are the right. labeled class and we can deform. And that's another thing is that do we add in your freedom from 5D or do we count in the 4D sector, new hidden sector like CFT and TQRT in? Well, certainly just depends on whether you want to add in and then, you know, if you want to cancel them, then there's also a trivial class. If you only concern the standard model sector, then they do have a label or non-trivial label in within this. I see. I see. Yeah. There, there are a lot of restrictions, but it's possible, you know, you can start one can study much more. Generally, I just say that if I if I have a way to add in topological or CFT or whatever degree of freedom that I can move between the vacuum and something about discrete gauge forces come into a play in a way to constrain by global anomaly, then I'll call this a name. And I, I take uh, what the uh, Jeff's complain about that. It's it's not quite, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's not it's not a single force at, at this moment anyway. But I feel it's, a, it's still a good some effective field theory in some way. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, if there are any more questions, let's uh, thank the speaker one more time. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.